Hello and welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you to my backyard on this windy day. The storms have rolled through. Everything's looking pretty good. We're going to walk around and scrounge up and forage some dinner. So let's have some fun. We're going to be using chicken and some surprise vegetables as well as some wild greens and maybe a little rice who knows i'm tired but we gotta have dinner so let's go get busy first on the agenda is my snow peas now i am behind on harvesting some of them they're big but you know, that one is perfect. I'm going to put it in the jar. This one is perfect. Let's see. There's another pretty one. Well, let's get my clippers out. My hands are not wanting to work. So we're going to throw that one in the jar. Now I got some big ones back here. But that's okay. That's perfectly fine. I will get them. Come on. And see. I'm going to have to string them. But they're already starting to string themselves. So here's another big one. Here's an, I'm sorry y'all, I'm just taking y'all everywhere. There's two. Organic y'all, organically grown in the hootie hoop house. Here's another pretty one. That way you can see that, yes, I am actually getting them off plants. So somebody can't accuse me of not growing them. Let's see. I know I had some bigger ones. I gave Junior a great big one yesterday. Ha! Now you have to watch snow peas. This is a baby, but I'm going to get it anyway. They like to hide. See? There's a little one. And so I got plenty more blooms coming. I need to get them trellised up. So they'll grow even taller and bigger. Uh-oh, jackpot. Come to mama. Come on. Hold on a minute. There we go. I had to work that one to get it. Okay. Let's see what do we want to go for next. Here's another one. We're going to have quite a few. I mean, not a giant amount, but I am thankful for them. I'll let that baby stay on there. Here's another one. I absolutely love snow peas. There's a good size one. All right, I'm going to keep on harvesting, and I'll bring you back. It's not a whole lot, but it's enough for me and Junior to have a little bit apiece. So, let's go on to the next harvesting area. Okay, I forgot to hit record before harvesting the asparagus. Look at those beautiful spears. Massive. And they're not tough. That one cut like butter. Look how big that is. And it cut like butter. Part of dinner. There's another monster purple passion coming up. There's another monster one. And this is only the beginning 
of the harvest. So we have a bunch to go into dinner tonight. Okay, I want some garlic added into the recipe tonight. And like I said, this is a volunteer garlic in a completely different bed. And I just pull them up. I'm going to slice them up all the way to the tips of the green. Of course, I clean up any of the dead plant material. So this baby is going into the pot. Even though the cleavers are too big for medicinal purpose, I'm making tincture, you can still harvest the young tips and add them into the dinner. So I'm just going to snip as I go the cleavers, also known as Velcro plant. <coughs> I'm having to be careful. I've got pokeweed coming up. I got more baby elderberries coming up. Nasty, god awful privets. And I'm just going to harvest a handful of the cleavers. Don't have to have a whole lot. But it'll do us some good. Little. You can't tell, but it's a good amount because cleavers cleave to one another. Now, at this time of year, you have to watch out because with the rain acting weird, the purple dead nettle will start to get powdery mildew on it. And you definitely... Don't want any of that. So, I'm just going to pick the tips of a bunch of purple dead nettle and add that in. So far, so good. I'll bring you back. Now, I'm going to need a little seasoning. My oregano is starting to come up so i am so thankful for it it's spreading like wildfire so i'm going to grab a few sprigs i'm gonna grab some more probably about two tablespoons or more knowing me of fresh picked oregano okay let's get started cooking I have one medium onion diced, and I have sliced and diced that whole stalk of garlic. One thing I removed was one of the, well, a couple of the brown tips and the roots. I took them off and used the whole thing because you can use the whole garlic. Now, I'm using things I have in my pantry. A few things I got from the store, but this was a while back when I got those. Things I have foraged and things I have organically grown. And you can make a simple, delicious, healthy dinner from what's all around you. Let those cook. Oops. Get that onion in that. I have a few sprigs of oregano in there. But in goes my pieced up asparagus as well as the snow peas. 
I just want to give them a small saute. So. I'm going to let them kind of what I call stew a little bit here in a bit. Stew, poach, whichever one you want to call it. And yes, the bigger pieces of the purple asparagus are soft. They're not woody. Now, you wouldn't believe it, but the, uh, quite a few pieces of the stem of the green asparagus were hard as rocks, y'all. And they weren't even half the size, not even close to being half the size of the purple asparagus. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. I want to add some of my spices because I like to build layers. And I have some Tony Saturay's original seasoning. Now, seasonings are optional. You use what you like. Add some black pepper. Oh, that smells so good. And of course, my Kinder's wood fired garlic. Give it that smoky, irresistible flavor. Oh man, I wish y'all could smell that wood fired garlic. If you can get a hold of it, it is absolutely amazing. Oh, but I'm not done yet, y'all. I'll let it saute a little bit longer. And it's going to take a little while for those bigger snow peas to get done and for these bigger asparagus spears to cook through. No, not woody, but to be cooked. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, I have a pint jar of my homemade mushroom stock. And it has mushrooms, onions, all kinds of seasoning, and chaga powder. Definitely want to rinse that jar out. Now I want a good amount of water in there. Hope my flame didn't blow. Nope, flame's still going. Okay. Because later on I'm gonna be adding some uh, rice to this, but not yet. Now I'm going to be adding the purple dead nettle tips, or the tops, and the oregano. Now this time of year you have to not be so much careful, but you have to be on the lookout because the oaks are blooming. And the little prawns the bloom fronds that make acorns 
to future acorns will be all in your stuff. And I'm just going to separate the cleavers because, yeah, they're going to stick together like crazy. And your medicinal herbs, you don't always have to drink as tea or take as tincture. You can cook with them. And that way, they become affectionately known as pot. P-O-T as in pot that you cook in pot herb. Oh, let me tell you, this is smelling amazing. Now, now that I got a good basis of, of stock going here, I'm going to add some boneless, skinless chicken tenders in to cook. You want to make sure they get submerged in that amazing goodness that is building. And yes, I'm cooking a whole small package of chicken tenders, not Tyson chicken tenders, but chicken tenders, because this way, hopefully, we'll have enough left over to where I can come home tomorrow and not have to cook. Look at that. Look at that. Don't that look good? Now, of course, putting the chicken tenders in has cooled down the stock but it'll build back up and it's going to give time for the asparagus to get cooked the snow peas to get cooked mushrooms are already cooked now if you don't have mushroom broth or mushroom stock like I do or you don't like mushrooms you can leave the mushrooms out or if you want the mushrooms and you don't have the homemade mushroom stock, you can just use fresh sliced, these are baby bellas, and just saute them with the onions and the garlic. I'm going to add just a little more water. Like I said, I want the chicken submerged, and I'm going to be adding some, uh, for another flavor level, I have a pouch of microwavable fried rice, so that should give it even more flavor as well. Alright, I will bring you back as soon as the chicken is cooked, which won't take long. Because chicken tenders don't take too long to cook. And once the asparagus and the snow peas and all this goodness is all mingled together. See you back here after a bit. Okay, the chicken is cooked. Everything else is cooked. And you can use plain rice. You can leave this alone. Eat it as a soup. But I have, or you can add pasta if you want to. I have some Simply Asia fried rice. It's microwave rice, which you can cook in a skillet as well. GMO free, MSG free, and no artificial anything in it. Now, I might not use all the rice in there. Oh, it smells so good. And it'll give us a little layer of flavor and it also has 
peas and carrots and other things in it. Oh, what the heck, I'm just going to put it all in there. It also has corn as well. And of course, it's going to soak up that juice. Not going to soak up all of it, but it will. Oh, that is just a walk full of happiness. Waka waka. All right, I'm going to bring that up to a simmer again. Let it cook for a little bit. And then it's going to be dinner time. And definitely should have leftovers for tomorrow night. Yay. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. And of course, if you wanted to, you could do some um, Italian bread or just regular bread to sop up what juices are left. I'm going to let this cook for a little while and then I will bring y'all back when it's time to plate it up. I am too hungry to wait. I'm going to get Junior to clear off. Look at that. You want to bowl up a bunch of this goodness. Make sure he gets some snow peas and some asparagus and mushrooms. Look at that. Don't that look delicious? Okay. And if you wanted to, you could leave it meatless. You could use pork. I'd use pork loin chops. Or you want to get some of that purple dead nettle in there. I want some snow peas. But yep. And we have a good little amount left for dinner tomorrow night. And get me just a little bit more. But look at that. Alright, I'll bring you back in just a bit. Okay, it is time to dig in. I want a little bit of chicken. A little piece of chicken. Some snow peas. A little mushroom. Some of the wild greens. And of course, me being me, I sprinkled some more Tony Saturé on it. Oh my god, that's good. It's hot. Not spice hot, heat hot. Simple, easy, homemade. You can mix around the ingredients. But definitely work in the medicinal culinary wild greens as much as you possibly can. Stinging purp no, purple dead nettle is delicious. If I'd had big enough stinging nettles, I would have added them too. Don't forget to cook them stinging nettles as well. They are absolutely delicious added into foods. I'm fixing to go sit down because... I'm tired and I'm ready to eat. Everyone, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Please stay safe and sound in this crazy world because people's getting crazier by the day. <clears throat> Continue to stock up your pantries with food that will nourish and sustain you and um, canned items, home canned items that you can add to other recipes and other dinners and so on. <coughs> <coughs>
medicinals that will heal you. Protection of all kinds and the bare essentials to survive on. Everyone, take care. May you each be blessed. Hoot, hoot. I'll see you soon.